right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up to two last scriptures here. John 8, verse 58 through 59, and then Revelation 22, verse 12 through 16. And even Isaiah 44, verse 6, we'll touch on briefly in our devotion today. We're wrapping up our study on the foundation of the faith that Jesus is God. Jesus is God. It's very important. We've talked about it. I gave you that illustration of why it's so important. If you wonder why Satan and the cults all attack the deity of Christ so much, is because if Jesus was not God, then his sacrifice on the cross for our sins was not sufficient. It would not be sufficient for a really good man to die for our sins. It wouldn't be sufficient for a prophet to die for our sins. Jesus wasn't one of many gods, like Mohammed was a rendition of, of the Logos, and Bahalalel was a rendition of the Logos, and Jesus was a rendition of the Logos. No, Jesus is God. He is Jehovah. God was in Christ reconciling to the world to himself. God did not take his son, throw him on the grenade and save us. God was in Christ. He threw himself on that grenade to rescue you and I. The Bible teaches that time and time again, and we're going to look at two more areas of scriptures that teach this. Here in John chapter 8, this is one of my favorite areas of scripture. I love this area of scripture. Uh, the, the, the Jews come to Jesus, and they, they tell him in verse 48, do we say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Wrong both times. Jesus was not a Samaritan, right? He's born, he was from the tribe of Judah. He's from the lineage of David. Jesus was not a Samaritan, and he didn't have a demon. Actually, Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus answers them these questions, and he tells them that you don't honor. You don't honor him. And then in verse 57, then the Jews said to him, the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham, because Jesus had just said in verse 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. He's talking about Abraham was waiting for Messiah. Jesus is saying, I am Messiah. I am Emmanuel, God with us. I'm Messiah. And they said, you are not even 50 years old. How have you seen Abraham? In verse 58, Jesus throws the, the, right, the right hook, man. He just throws the big upper hand punch. Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, he says, I am. And this is a reference to Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, when Moses says to the burning bush, to God himself, he says, whom should I tell Pharaoh has sent me? And he says, tell him I am that I am. You may be confused. Jehovah Witnesses may be confused. Cults that claim Jesus didn't cl be, claim to be God may be confused. But the Jews standing there knew exactly what Yeshua was saying. He says, before Abraham was, I am. And immediately, verse 59, then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself, went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. They were ready to stone Jesus because he says, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Jesus is God. Now listen to this, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. The Old Testament, Isaiah, Jehovah is speaking, saying, I am the first, I am the last, I'm the Alpha, I'm the Omega. Besides me, there is no God. Now we fast forward to Revelation 22. I know a few verses today, but I want to really nail this down for you. You could jot these verses down in your Bible, maybe even make a Bible chain reference system. So if somebody questions Jesus being God, you'll have all these verses you could share with them. This is my very favorite, Revelation 22. This is where clearly Jesus says, I am God. He says, Revelation 22, verse 12, Behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to give to everyone according to his worth. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That's Jehovah. That's what God says. That's what Isaiah 44 verse 6 says. Blessed are those who do his commandments. And then he goes on to verse 16. Who is the one speaking? Who just said, I am the Alpha and the Omega? I'm the beginning and the end. Verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. Jesus signs his name, man. 
He says, I, Jesus, I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. I, Jesus. Brother, sister, listen. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And it's very important. The Bible teaches it. That's the first reason why we need to believe Jesus is God, because the Bible teaches it. But number two, it's very important. If you wonder, why does Satan attack the deity of Christ, the reality that Jesus is God so much? Because if you believe that a really good man died on the cross for your sins, then you're not saved. You're still doing a works-based faith. If you believe that a prophet better than just a man, lesser than God, but better than just a man died for your sins, then you're not saved. You're still working your way up to heaven. But if you believe that God left heaven's throne, became a man, lived a sinless life, and God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, then whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a foundation of the faith. It is an essential that you and I cannot let go of. There's certain things we can keep our hand open, how people dress to church, the type of music. Many things are non-essentials, but in the essentials, there must be unity. In the essentials, we cannot give them away. In the fact that Jesus Christ is God, that our salvation comes through God in human flesh dying for our sins, we can't give that away. We have to hold firmly to this truth. So let's walk in that together. Put these verses together in your Bible. Create a little Bible chain. That just means you write, you, you pick one verse you know you'll remember about the deity of Christ, maybe John 1.1, 1, 1, and then next to it you write one of the verses, and then in the next one you write one of the verses, and you can go right through it. You can share this, the truth, with others. And like Jesus says, you'll know the truth in John 8, and the truth will set you free. The foundation of the faith. And Father, I pray that the truth that Jesus, you are God, would be known by your people and that this tr truth would set them free and would set those around them free, those that they spread the seed to, they share the word with. So, Father, bless your people with the knowledge of your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.